Hi friends, Simit here from InformedTrades.com. Today we're going to talk about the price book ratio, what that is and how investors can use it to find undervalued stocks. Let's get started. Okay, key points. We'll start by defining the price to book ratio. Then we'll take a look at some evidence of its predictive value that suggests that looking at this ratio can help you identify stocks that will outperform and earn you money. We'll see how this can be combined with other value indicators to earn even more money, maximum effectiveness, or at least some, some indications that this is true, this is the case. And lastly, we'll tie it up with an example usage of a screener, stock screener that helps you identify what stocks have low price to book ratios, price to book ratios that are favorable, that suggest the stock will outperform based on the data that we uh, presented in this video. And uh, that will help you identify those stocks and make those purchases and utilize this information. Okay, so let's get started. What is price to book ratio? Price to book ratio is basically the stock price divided by total assets minus the sum of intangible assets and liabilities. Intangible assets is something like a company's brand or its goodwill. So, and then we're taking out liabilities. We're, we're subtracting from total assets, intangible assets, and liabilities. The basic thing we're trying to get at is what are the actual assets of the company? It, it, it's valuing the future, the price you're paying, the price you're paying for a company relative to just what it owns. It's, you're not thinking about earnings. You're not looking at the future, really. This is this is what you're getting today. Um, so that's sort of what the price-to-book ratio is about. And a low price-to-book ratio means that you're getting a lot of assets relative to the amount you're paying. Um, and in some instances, something that a lot of value investors really look for is the price-to-book ratio below one, in which case you could turn around and sell those assets and make more than what you paid for. That's what a price to book ratio below one means. But a low price to book ratio suggests that the company is undervalued based on the assets it has. It either suggests that or it suggests that the assets are depreciating, they're not going to have value tomorrow, uh, that there's something something wrong, there's no hope for the company. So it's, it's one or the other. It's either a great value deal or the company is not going on the right track. We can combine it with other information to sort of see what the real story is. But that's the basic idea behind price book ratio, understanding what you're paying for or the value of the company's assets relative to its selling price. So let's go through an example here. Let's, uh, in our price to earnings video, we talked about a simple lemonade stand. Let's return to that lemonade stand. Let's say it's a simple lemonade stand that has $50 in cash based on its sales to date and the customers have paid for. It's got $5 worth of cups, $10 worth of sugar. These are its assets. $5 worth of lemons will. Now, in reality, some of these assets, especially the lemons, may depreciate, right? So, but let's assume, let's not regard that, um, you know, that in a lot of companies, you know, you may want to factor in depreciating assets. But for now, let's, let's not look at the issue of depreciation. Debt is going to be, let's say the company owes, you know, someone, some the grocery store, $10, let's say it bought the sugar uh, with debt. And the company wants to go out of business. The, the kids who ran the lemonade stand, they, uh, you know, they, they want to move on to other ventures. They think this is as good as it's going to get for the lemonade stand. So they want to sell it and they want to sell it for $50. What is the price to book ratio of this company? We start by adding up the assets. 50 plus 5 plus 10 plus 5. We take out the uh, intangible assets and the liabilities. There's a liability of $10. That gives us $60. Then we divide that by the price of the company. 60 divided by 50 equals 1.2. So the company has a price to book ratio of 1.2. Another way of looking at it is that it's asking you for 20% more than what the assets are, are worth. So you have to pay a 20% premium for what are you paying for in this instance? Maybe the company's presence. If you think the company has a good foundation, has loyal customers, and that you'll be able to earn that in future earnings, that's sort of what you're paying the 20% premium for. Now, if the premium was, if the, if the company wanted $100, if the selling price was $100, the price to book ratio would be 2.4. So then they're asking for a much larger premium. And that's sort of the way to think of a price to book ratio. Okay. Low stocks with, or stocks with a low price to book ratio do tend to outperform. Here, this is a look at European stocks. And of course, it's not indicative of past performance. And we're looking at only from 2002 to 2013. So it's a 10-year period. But over this 10-year period, the lowest price, the 20% of stocks with the lowest price to book uh earning, or ratio, excuse me, is this dark line. And we see the highest 
is this light gray line. So we can see this has been pretty predictive, even in the crash of 2008, 2009, you know, everything went down, but the stocks with the low price to book ratio did outperform the index at large, which is the blue line, and we saw that the stocks with a really high price to book ratio, uh, you know, did the worst. Outperformed by 7% annualized. Uh, so this is some measure that, you know, if you focus on the 20%, that, qu that quantile, that's the lowest price to book ratio, you'll get some outperformance there. Here's another way of looking at it, going back to 1993, so we have a larger data set. If you buy, and we saw a similar thing with the price to earnings ratio, where there's a mean, reversal, mean reversion principle in a lot of these valuation ratios, and if you buy the index at the right time, at those critical lows, I mean, here we see emerging market price book ratio, you know, when it fell to one, so you could buy emerging market stocks for book value, not even thinking about future earnings. You know, that's, that's you're going to see in a crisis. We had the emerging market crisis at the turn of the millennium. We had the global crisis in 2008, right? So you can use this as a mean reversion indicator. When you see those large indices hit one, you know, or hit a very low point, that's your time to buy. And so buy and hold investors will really like this idea. You're only going to make a few trades, but if you time it right, it can be remarkably lucrative. And price to book ratio, along with price to earnings, price to cash flow, have that element of mean reversion to them. Combine the price to book ratio with return on equity. Return on equity is so basically what you're doing here. You know, price to book. We're looking at what are we paying for? What are we paying relative to the book value of the stock? Return on equity is the book value of the stock. How much income? How much? earnings is it generated. So it's earnings divided by the assets of the company, basically. So you want to see stocks that have positive earnings and a really high return on equity. So if you want to see stocks that can use the, generate a lot of income from their assets, as well as have a low price to book ratio. That's sort of what we're looking at here. And this dark blue line here, that's clearly the outperformer, is the 20% lowest price to book ratio combined with the 33% highest return on equity stocks. So this is saying, show me the stocks that are both in the lowest 20% of price to book ratio and also in the 33% of the highest return on equity stocks. So these stocks, you're not, basically what you're looking at with this, with these indicators here, these ratios, you're not paying much for the assets of a stock based on that price to book ratio. And these assets are generating a lot of income based on the fact that they're in the top third of highest return on equity stocks. And these are again European equities going back to 2002, but you can see a clear outperformance here. Does uh, much better than virtually everything else. And as you might expect, you know the highest 20% and the lowest 33% of return on equity stocks uh, is the is the least performing. Does does the worst. So that sort of gives you an idea. And intuitively, this may make a lot of sense, and that's why some people really gravitate towards value investing. It just sort of makes intuitive sense if you get the idea of. I don't have to pay a lot for these assets based on the price to book ratio, and these assets are generating a lot of earnings, a lot of future cash flow based on the return on equity. Well, put those two together, and you might have a company that's worth buying. Okay, now let's take a look at actually applying these concepts using a stock screener. The one that I personally use is Guru Focus. It is a premium screener. Prices start at $350 per year. There are some other free screeners out there, and we have a large archive of this, uh, people discussing screeners on informtrades.com. Some of them may not have all the data you're looking for. You may not find the methods that they calculate some of these financial ratios to be questionable. So it really depends on what you're looking for. Personally, I like uh, Google Focus. It really has a lot of information, has the data set that I'm looking for, and, and I trust its integrity. So basically what we can do if we want to screen for price to book stocks, go here, all in one screener, and that sort of takes us to this page. We can select the number of uh, regions of the world that we want to screen for, you know, where the stock is listed. The base package is only USA. That's sort of what I'm focused on. You can add other areas if you want to uh, add an additional cost to screen for more and more stocks. From there, we just click valuation ratio, and then we can see price to book. We see the options. We can specify a number here. I want to see price to book below five, below three. Um, or, or within a range to from you know four to two or something like that. Generally, remember with the idea of valuation ratios, the lower number is is favorable. Or we can just say you know what, show me the top five hundred, uh, and then we can see it here. 
on the right side here, you know, it instantly appears. On the right side, you'll see it says 0, 0.0. That doesn't mean that it's actually 0, 0.0. It means there's another decimal place, and in this column, they're rounding it down. So this one, Golden Hope Mines, I think is 0, 0.0 to 3. And same idea with the market cap here. It's not considering decimal places. So that's also something to consider. You know, you see the top 500 there. As we saw in some of the other slides, it helps to add other criteria. Return on equity. So we may say, you know, we want to be in the top 20% return on equity. So now we're screening for top 20% of stocks that are in the, in the United States, in the U.S. stocks that are in the top 20% return on equity, and the top 500 price-to-book ratios, meaning the lowest 500 price-to-book ratios. And here we see a list of stocks here. Now we see a bunch of stocks that are trading at really penny stocks here. Market cap is incredibly low. We can also specify through our screener, uh, you know, I want to make sure that the company has at least this amount in sales, uh, has a this amount on cash, cash to debt ratio here, um, and things like that. Price, all sorts of price metrics to make sure that you're getting a large enough, uh, a large enough stock or stocks that meet your criteria. And that's sort of the way the basic screener works. They also have for those that are especially interested in price to book uh, ratios, they have some scans built in for you, some screens built in for you. Historical low price to book companies, and these are companies that uh, are trading based on Guru Focus's own method. Companies that are trading at a low price to book ratio based on their own history, so within thirty percent off the low of their price to book ratio. So that's something you can see a more detailed explanation here. Top twenty-five historical price to book. The street strategy is discussed here, but basically, the idea is they're giving you some stocks if you want to screen on a price to book ratio, uh, some stocks that they think, that they feel are are recommended based on that criteria, and that's sort of you know uh, lots of information here at Guru, Fo Guru Focus. This is just one way or a couple ways that you can uh, use that uh, the screener to to find those undervalued stocks. And that's about it for this introduction to the price book ratio. Any questions you have, anything you want to add on this subject. Join us at informedtrades.com. Best of luck in your trading, and we'll see you next time. Take care.